This right here is huge news for me personally. So if you've been around my channel for any length of time, you know that I am a massive Tad Williams fan. I've promoted his live readings that he does on Facebook, on our Discord quite frequently. Every time I get a chance to talk about this guy as a writer, I, I've talked about Memory, Sorrow, and, and Thorn, and how that book was a major influence on my fantasy writing, but how also this series right here, um, the Otherlands series, has been one of my favorite kind of like cyberpunk um, futuristic stories series ever, and it's four massive volumes um, that are just, it's an absolutely amazing series. And his wife just shared this on Twitter. Deborah Beale just shared this on Twitter. And I caught it and I was like, oh my God, I have to make a video about this. So they've been holding this under wraps here. But um, Platige Image, um, who's done The Witcher, uh, Mount Devil together with the Wheel of Time's executive producer Mike Weber, are in the works now on a TV series based on Other Land, the four book series by Tad Williams. Other Land is described as an epic cyberpunk fantasy adventure. And the summary reads The world as we know it has an additional layer here. Hyper-realistic VR arenas that have become a new place for fun work, education, but also debauchery, crime, and abuse. The mysterious other land, supposedly another layer of the network, becomes a mere starting point for a multi-realm adventure. Now, there's a bunch of more information here, but before I get to reading this part, I want to tell you a little bit about Otherland from my perspective as a reader. It's been a while since I've read this. I read it like three times when it first came out. I was obsessed with this series because it was like the second series of books I'd read by him. There's other series as well, like the Shadow March, I think is what it's called. Um, there's the Bobby, is it Bobby Angel? Um, I can't remember the other series he has of like the angel who's a detective. Um, he does lots of cool stuff. Anyway, this series in particular, the main focus here is like they it's a not so distant future where people live in a realm where we are plugged into the internet every day and it's become it's become uh, augmented reality in this in essence. But um, also you can go fully online. People can go online for weeks on ends with these suits where you're getting fed intravenously and your waist is like tick ways to take care of think of like a you know a modern still suit for going online for long periods of time and the idea is that in the vr realm in the virtual world they have uh huge huge realms entire realms of possibilities so one of the core characters one of the major characters is a kid who has this aging disease where he's bedridden and he's He's going to die early because he has this terminal illness where he's aging very quickly. Um, it's a real disease. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. So in the real world, he's an invalid. He's stuck in a bed. He can't do anything. But in the online world, he's, I think it's Thargar or something like that, like the mightiest barbarian in this MMORPG that he plays. And he has his friends that he plays the game with. And no one knows who he is in real life. They just know his online persona. So people can have these online personas. And... They adventure through many various different worlds. In the course of this, we come to find out that there's this organization who has figured out a way to transfer their consciousness from the real world to the online world and essentially gain immortality. And there's a whole bunch of nefarious stuff that happens around that theme and the way they're doing that to get to use people and the energy of everyone plugged into the internet to fuel the online worlds where they live. And it's, it's, that's the very short version of this. So in the course of this four book adventure, these characters go on this wild, crazy ride across multiple realms that are fantastical, there's science fiction, there's cyberpunk, there's all these different worlds that they're visiting. It is an amazing journey. It's a super cool series if you've not read this yet. Um, anyway. Let's read more about this. Um, it says here, The Inception-like mechanics contain a series of realms, some uncannily resembling the world we know. Others are bizarre clusters of familiar creations and characters like intergalactic taverns, medieval fantasies, battlegrounds of World War I. There's one that's like uh, the chessboard from um, Alice in Wonderland. Um, Weber said, I believe Tad has written the definitive work on the conflict between the human experience and technological advancements. He depicts a not-so-distant future where the choice between living in the real or the virtual world becomes a choice between life or death. The prescient themes and fantastic characters give Otherland all the foundations of a next-level sci-fi drama series adaptation. 
Weber is credited with being the architect behind the Wheel of Time series, having first brought the project to Sony Pictures TV and overseeing development and production after the project was sold to Amazon. Based in London, he continues to oversee Wheel of Time while also filming Season 3, as well as serving on an ex- as an executive producer on Sony's ongoing Jumanji film franchise. He's repped by UTA. Um, Platige Images, the studio behind The Witcher and its collaboration on Love, Death, and Robots, which also, if you've not watched Love, Death, and Robots, holy crap, that is an amazing anthology here. So we have a, a, a series of production companies that have put together some seriously prestigious work, although not everyone agrees that The Wheel of Time is, you know, or The Witcher are great adaptations. They have been successful regardless of that fact. Um, these companies, uh, that company in particular has a history spanning over two decades, best known for their innovative techniques in the realm of animation and VFX with game cinematic critics such as Metro Exodus, Cyberpunk 2077, Call of Duty Warzone. Um, and then the content broker and co-producer Mount Devil was founded in 2020 to identify and acquire exceptional ideas, licenses, and stories to develop in a series and or films. Quick commercial break, everyone, to celebrate and give thanks to all of these amazing people who keep me on the air full time. Really appreciate the support. All you got to do is join as a member. You get access to private videos. You can also do super thanks on any upload or super chats and stickers on any live stream or premiere you see. And beyond that, don't forget we're multi streaming over on Twitch now, so you can support over there as well. Thanks so much to everybody. Let's get back to the video at hand. The other line producing team has received financial support from Creative Europe Media and is in the process of interviewing writers and showrunners. So it's still fairly early on in the process. That This does not mean that the show has been greenlit or anything like that. Um, it means that they're in the works. So this is something that's currently been optioned. They've bought the rights. They have put money into it. They're searching for showrunners and they're putting something together that could be something that then gets sold to a studio. So it's still very early on in the overall process of making a TV series. But this is big news because I just freaking love this series. And it's the first time, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I would I would think I would know. It's the first time that anything that Tad Williams has written has come to film. And this also is on the heels of there's another production company working with Raymond Feist to bring... Um, the uh, Midgard realm to life um, and the Rift, the Rift Wars saga. So it's an interesting time because here you have a couple. I mean, Raymond Feist is, I think he's around 80 these days. I think Tad's in his late 50s, early 60s. Um, you know, these guys have been around for a while and they've got decades under their belts as authors, but they've been very selective about, you know, doing something with their books over the years because they want to obviously retain creative control and there's nothing wrong with that. Not everyone needs to be Stephen King where they're just, you know, they sell the rights to everything because who cares how it turns out? We're just going to, we're just going to go out there and saturate. Um, I, I think either way is good. It's just you as a personal individual. Um, but this is big news. It also, um, I think I'm going to reread these in 2024 guys. Um, I think it would be a really cool project to do for the channel. Um, something fun maybe not this channel the other channel um that we're doing oh, i haven't talked about that yet Shh, we're not, that's secret because i stopped doing the podcast here because we're doing something else with another channel in the, for the reading stuff anyway um i'm finished with the dune series right now reading those and i think i know i wanted to do like the expanse deck series i've not read those but this news makes me want to reread the other land series because i've not read these in it's probably been 15 years since i've sunk my teeth into these honestly and it's a really good series so if you haven't read this series by Tad Williams yet. You need to go do it now. Get on it. It's really good. It's four books. They're big books, but you could read this pretty quickly. But it's cool news. There's something at least brewing. And I really personally, I personally really hope that this comes to the airwaves. Um, it'll be one of those ones where I look at it sort of um, kind of like I do with the Wheel of Time, you know, sort of being like, I understand they're going to make creative changes to it. We'll see what those are. Personally, I hope it would be really cool if they went with the adult you know, a more adult version of it. But given the fact that the shows they've worked on so far have been more sort of family friendly, um, or at least PG-13, um, I would imagine they're going to do something that's a little... And plus the, the themes in the book, they can be dark, but we have kids that are main characters. So I doubt this would be something that would be too edgy, if that makes sense. Uh, I'm really excited. Thought I'd share the news. Like, subscribe to the bell icon so you never miss an update. I'll see you all in the next one. Stay safe. Happy reading, everybody.